Amber, Kaya, and Lisa, Genshin starters. They're the first few characters which you receive in Genshin Impact, and likely the first few to start off that group of characters which you've abandoned forever. But even if they are towards the bottom of usage amongst the player base, we know that each of them is set to play major roles later on in the game's story. The next region of Teyvat to become playable is Sumeru. From the manga, we know that that's where Amber's friend Kale is, and Lisa was an acclaimed graduate of Sumeru Academia. And of course, Kaya being from Kanria just like Dainsleaf, is certain to become key to the plot at some point. But despite there being so much about these characters that remains to be explored, we haven't really gotten anything in almost two years of the game being out. There's probably many reasons for this, but it's hard not to think that one of them is the fact that unlike all other playable characters, these three aren't marketable. Not because they're hated or anything, but rather because they actually cannot be sold since they are only available on the standard banner that nobody should ever spend money on. There is the Star Glitter Exchange, but since each character only appears two times a year, if your acquaint fate rolls are unlucky, then C6 would actually take three years. But what if Genshin added a way to upgrade four star characters into revamped five stars, as a way to fix their outdated kits, while also giving Hoyoverse an excuse to finally start putting them on limited character banners. But before we get started, I'd like to take a quick minute to first thank our sponsor for today's video, Friends and Dragons. This strategic mobile RPG is available for free on both the App Store and Google Play Store, featuring a wide variety of gameplay styles for you to enjoy. There's the collection aspect of gathering more than 150 unique, powerful heroes with personalized customization in the form of items and skill upgrades. You'll also have to strategize how you want to move your units around as you engage in puzzle-based combat. This game additionally features social aspects with there being guilds to join where you can chat and team up with others while taking on rewarding cooperative challenges. If you want, you can even join mine, Red Flames Red Friends. The game currently has the limited Chase the Dragon event going on right now where you can take on a unique one-time event with a final prize of a 4-star summoning scroll. If you're interested, download Friends and Dragons from the link in the description or by scanning the QR code on screen and get the following special bonuses. One free summon, daily energy potions, and gold. Thanks again to Friends and Dragons for sponsoring this video. Realistically speaking, I feel that giving older characters unlockable upgrades is much more likely than them getting new versions released as completely separate playable characters. If you're going to make a brand new kit, you might as well make a new character too, but for an upgrade, it would make sense that it would share many similarities to the original. So that was my philosophy when making the concepts you're about to see. I wanted to retain the character's current identities while bringing all the finer details up to Genshin's modern standards for 5 stars. By this, I mainly mean that the kits should be both unique from what other characters provide and cohesive in that everything in it focuses around that niche role. And while I know this tends to be on the more obscure side for most characters, I'd like to implement other elements of their designs into their gameplay wherever possible. I'm not going to be very specific with numbers since I'm focusing on design and not balance. Also, I'm not going to worry about constellations because for 5 stars the base kit is the most important and constellations really just exist as creative ways of increasing DPS or utility, so design-wise they really can be anything. First up is Amber, and while I have talked about her gameplay design on two separate occasions, today we're going with much more creative approaches. I still think further pushing her niche of getting powerful single target damage with headshots is the way to go, so that'll be the focus. Baron Bunny is definitely too iconic to get rid of completely, but typical suggestions like allowing her to remote detonate by recasting or making her C2 a part of her base kit doesn't fit the identity I'm looking for. I instead want to buff it by giving it the property of enemies taunted by it take increased crit damage. Naturally this lends itself well to Amber since enemies are already vulnerable to being crit by headshots, but it would also give her supportive capabilities which can be utilized by the rest of the team. It would also get rid of the contradictory property that as you level up the talent it gets more health, which then makes it less likely to explode to do damage and generate energy, since this change makes it so you actually want Baron Bunny to be alive as long as possible. Oh yeah, and also make it take less knockback since that stops it from doing its job of keeping enemies in place. I also want to change Amber's normal attack so she has a real way to generate her own energy. We'll add a level 2 charge that does more damage, flies faster to make aiming a bit easier, and generates energy. 
let's adjust the 4th Ascension passive to instead grant Amber a long-lasting stacking attack bonus for hitting aimed shots on weak spots, but have it so a stack is lost if your shot doesn't hit any enemies. This would further reward players for taking their shots deliberately. Another bit of quality Amber could use is having a way of disengaging like the other ranged characters with taunt skills, especially since the manga depicts her as being someone who is quite nimble. So I'll add that when Baron Bunny is on the field, Amber's elemental skill is replaced by a dodge roll that has invincibility during the start and consumes no stamina, but has its own cooldown. With Amber's elemental burst, I don't hate it, but it being an AoE kind of contradicts the whole single target game plan, so I want to add an optional hold version of the ability that reduces the size of the AoE in exchange for a longer duration, which equals more focused damage. For convenience's sake, I want to change the first ascension passive to make it so that if Baron Bunny is on the field, the AoE activates on top of it no matter how far it is, since you can aim Baron Bunny to go exactly where you want, but with her burst you can't. This would help give her kit a stronger theme of ranged DPS. Kaya was easily the toughest one to think of ideas for because he is just so simple. Both his abilities really only exist to do damage and apply cryo, and the other parts of his base kit just make him easier to pilot through healing and energy regeneration. So the one aspect I decided I wanted to build around actually isn't even in his base kit, but rather his second constellation. Never Ending Performance extends the duration of Kai's burst when an enemy is defeated while it is activated, so we'll change Kai's direction from being an okay flex DPS or support to being a sub DPS who excels against large waves of enemies through racking up takedowns. I don't really see many other ways to make him stand out against Ayaka, who is a crazy strong cryo DPS, and Diona and Shenha, who are both very good cryo supports for different reasons. So let's say that Kai's elemental skill also applies frost to any enemy hit, and if an enemy dies while afflicted, they explode into an AoE of cryo damage. If the enemy doesn't die after a decently long period of time, then it explodes on its own, so it's not completely useless against bigger enemies, but still is geared towards fighting hordes. For the 4th ascension passive, we'll make it so that when frost is detonated by killing an enemy, all enemies hit that have frost on them will have it detonated too. This would make it so that you can set up big chain reactions even if not every enemy is within killing range. Kaya's burst is already pretty strong in terms of damage and cryo application, but to make it align better with the rest of his kit, we'll borrow from his current C2. Every time frost detonates from any trigger, Kaya's burst duration is extended, and additionally once it reaches its max extension, the speed at which it spins increases, further boosting its damage and cryo application capabilities. It may seem weird for a character to intentionally be weak against single enemies, but it's not a completely new concept when you think about how things like Venti's Vacuum, Zhongli's Petrify, and buffs against frozen enemies don't work against the bigger bosses. So this concept is basically just taking that idea to the extreme. And last but not least we have Lisa. Her elemental skill is already very unique, with her gameplay loop consisting of her applying 3 stacks of conduction to enemies and then consuming them for huge damage. We'll keep the tap skill the same, but buff the size of the AoE and let it generate energy. Her first ascension passive currently lets her charged attacks also apply a stack of conduction. This allows her to apply stacks even if her elemental skill is on cooldown, but it is very slow and consumes a lot of stamina so I want to move away from this. Instead, I think it would be better if we leaned even more into her damage being frontloaded. So I'm changing Induced Aftershock instead to, after using Violet Arc, Lisa's next normal attack does increased damage. You already are going to mix in a single normal attack in the 1 second cooldown between taps, so this helps reinforce her basic combo. For the hold skill, the main issue is that it takes so long to charge, and if that wasn't bad enough, it can easily get cancelled by getting hit. I don't think it's necessary to shorten the charge, it just needs to feel better to use. We're gonna move the resistance to interruption to be a base part of the skill like how other characters have it, and make it a bit more rewarding to use by adding a whole new mechanic to it. Given that Lisa's title is the Witch of Purple Rose, I think it only makes sense for her to have a thorns effect in her kit, which deals damage back to enemies who hit her. Lisa's burst currently is a very basic AoE that deals persistent damage, but with her 4th ascension passive, when it hits enemies their defense is decreased by 15% for 10 seconds. 
This is quite powerful considering she is one of few characters who can do this and the only one to be able to do so without any constellations. But it's not quite good enough to make her stand out. With abilities like this, giving them a bit stronger utility can go a long way in terms of viability and potential team comps. I can think of two good possible additions in this department. The first being that allies inside deal increased elemental skill damage, granting her better support capabilities while still primarily benefiting her own damage. Similar to how Ayato increases normal attack damage and Raiden increases burst damage. Or alternatively, we can go all in on increasing Lisa's own DPS potential by making it so that while inside, Lisa's elemental skill cooldown is reduced after hitting a full charge on an enemy with 3 conductive stacks. Even if this wouldn't make her a top tier DPS, I think it would at least make her a bit more competitive and definitely feel more rewarding to use. So for my first attempts at designing new kits for Genshin characters, I feel pretty good about them, even if they weren't completely original. Obviously, I'm not going to even try to claim that these would be perfect or balanced, and I'm sure there will be many comments about details which I've overlooked, but overall I thought this was a pretty fun brainstorming session. Feel free to let me know if there are any other characters you'd like to hear hypothetical reworks of or any concepts you think would make for cool kits. But anyways, I hope you found this video to be interesting, and as always, thanks for watching.